Welcome, dear viewers, to our segment of Leadership His Way. I'm Prim Tumuranye, and I have guests in studio today. We are airing live from the Compassion Tower in Kololo. We are our hosts, and we want to thank them so much for being great partners as they support the cause of raising good leaders in Uganda. In studio tonight, I have uh, guests who I by now know you are well conversant with, but for the viewer that is logging on for the first time, I will introduce them. Uh, right on my left side, we have uh, Canon Edward Gamwa, and he formerly chaired the National Social Security Fund Board. He worked with the World Vision, and also worked with Acclaim Africa as director and senior consultant before he went into retirement. I must actually mention that my guests are all living in retirement, but they are not tired, but retired. They have put on new tires for the new roles that God has Canon given them. Canon Edward, tired. you are most welcome. Thank you very much, Prim. Thank you. We have right in the middle, Dr. Eki Chikule, who worked as the former Quality Assurance Director at Mild May, Uganda, and also currently works as principal Training Institute of Hospice and Palliative Care in Africa. You see, I said they are retired, but not tired. <laughs> they are simply retired, wearing new tires. You're most welcome, Dr. Eki. Thank you, Prim. Good You're evening, welcome. viewers. You are welcome. And at the extreme end, we have <coughs> Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyonyi, an evangelist that you probably have seen on different pulpits in Uganda and world over, but also served as the former vice chancellor for Uganda Christian University. You're most welcome, Dr. John. Uh, thank you very much, Prim, and good evening, viewers. Thank you. So you are most welcome. I want <coughs> to encourage you to keep it family TV, because the knowledge you are going to get is going to really be life transforming if you put it into practice. Today we are looking at integrity in leadership. Integrity in leadership. And uh, before we get into a deep dive, and Dr. John will be taking us through a brief exposition when we talk about integrity in leadership, what does it actually mean? I'm going to ask Dr. Eki to lead us in prayer, because remember this program, Leadership His Way. And when we start, we start with him. Dr. Eki, please lead us in a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Our Father God, we thank you so much for the opportunity we have to be here. Thank you for Family TV for hosting us. We thank you, Lord, that we can come here and talk about leadership, his way, your way. Father, we pray that you give us a clarity of mind. We pray that you communicate what you want us to, we pray that you will be a help and encouragement to the leaders out there. And we pray that we will mentor those who want to enter leadership. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Eki. Let me invite uh, Reverend Canon Dr. John to open us up when we talk integrity in leadership. What does it actually mean? Uh, thank you very much, Prim, once again, and uh, good evening, viewers, again. And uh, the topic of integrity <coughs> in leadership, or the very word integrity, is one of those words that I would say it is known by everyone and not understood by many. And that's why it is important for us to be talking about it. Now, when we come to talk about integrity and leadership, we want to understand what is integrity actually. Why is it necessary for us to have integrity? And then, of course, bring it down to our particular context, how, it, how Uganda ranks and how we are doing. So I'm sure there will be examples there. But also, how can I lead with integrity? Now, let me begin with a fallacy. I think that is very common. To think that the laws of a country, or even the rules and regulations of an institution, define 
integrity or set the standards for integrity. Um, it's not always that easy, you know, to, to do that. Um, you know, it's very possible actually to put in place laws that are not laws that observe integrity. But now going on to the issue of what is integrity, I like saying that the word integrity and the word integer in mathematics, because I'm a mathematician in background, do have the same root. The word integer means a whole number. And the word integrity is actually saying exactly the same thing, but this time it is being a whole person in character. That what people see is what you are, even in private. So it's not just in, uh, in public. So that, to me, and you can ask yourself, you know, if we're talking about integrity, what exactly, what other words would be synonyms that kind of explain it? Words like honesty, words like truthfulness, words like honor, words like veracity, reliability, uprightness, blamelessness, and so forth. So when we talk about integrity, we are talking about a whole person. Take, for example, someone is in office, you're a leader, you are in a position in office, and then you also have a family. Is your life with your family the same as your life in the office? That, that really is the heart of integrity, and many times, we fail to realize that. But the state of wholeness, a state of completeness, uh, or put it differently, integrity is a unified person. Is a unified person. If I'm treating my wife well, uh, and then in the, when, when she comes to the office, I, uh, I treat her well, I'm actually unified. But if I treat her badly in the home, and then I come to the office, and when she comes to visit, and I'm the most loving husband, yes. yeah. that is not integrity. That's not integrity. That's not integrity. Uh, the other mistake that many people make is to think that integrity only has to do with money. Mm. But it is the whole unified person. Mm. In fact, some of the words in the Bible that tend to address this whole issue are words like holy, words like being blameless, mm. being above reproach. Those are words that Paul uses repeatedly in the scriptures. There is one particular uh, statement that is made twice in 2 Kings that really strikes me. Because in 2 Kings chapter 12, verse 15, listen to these words. And these were people who were given the responsibility for the construction of the temple. They would give them the materials, give them the money, give them whatever. And listen what is said of them. And they, meaning the king and his leaders, they did not ask for an accounting from the men into whose hand they delivered the money to pay out to the workmen for they dealt honestly. Wow. That is integrity. Wow. Yeah. That is integrity. Wow. That I can look at someone mm. and, I say, and someone asks me, can you trust him with the money? That I can actually leave my wallet in front of that person full of money. I walk away, I come back, and I find that my money is still there. That is the heart of integrity. And a similar verse, and I will not read it, is also in 2 Kings 22, uh, verse 7. So integrity is really that unified person. I will just make a quote from Billy Graham. I'm sure most Christians are familiar with him. And to me, it has always spoken volumes. Because Billy Graham said, integrity is the glue that holds our way of life together. We must constantly strive to keep our integrity intact. And listen, and here is the punchline. Mm. Then he said, when wealth is lost, or gaga, mm. hmm? riches, when wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. Mm. When character is lost, all is lost. You see, because once you lose your integrity, mm. you've lost everything. From now on, any mention, John Senyonyi, even if they are mentioning it, 
innocently in a very good context, mm. people's minds go back. You see, that's the impact of a slip in integrity on who we are, because it is the whole character that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And I need to say, nobody can trust anyone who has no integrity. Mm -hmm. When you talk about marriages, if you do not have integrity in marriage, I can trust you. Mm -hmm. And any time the wife sees you with another woman, uh, she gets worried. <laughs> or the, the husband sees you with another man, mm -hmm. says her, now oh, I don't know. <laughs> what is happening there? Yes. It's even in politics. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have come to accept that politics is one place where integrity is not needed. No, that's not true. Mm -hmm. Politics actually needs it. How do you trust people going to parliament? Mm -hmm. You trust them. There must be a basic trust, and that basic trust flows out of integrity. Mm -hmm. Business. Business. How can you partner with another person to do a business where there is no integrity? All those are things I don't need to go on and on, but eventually where there is no integrity, there comes a wastage of resources. And I think Uganda should really be talking about that. That way we call it corruption, others call it stealing, and I think it's more the biblical word, but where there is no integrity, even the development of a country is impaired. Mm. Wow. Very profound reflections on integrity in leadership. Dr. Eki, what are you hearing from what Dr. John has just shared? I think he has given us a good overview. <clears throat> but we need to start at the very, very foundation of our existence as human, that is a family. Mm. Our parents cannot give us what they don't have. Mm. But I want to um, commend my parents, because those are those ones I know, they were people of integrity. Mm. And they passed it on. Mm. The importance of being a person of your word. I will do it, that's okay. She said she would do it, that's okay, because of the kind of person she is. Mm -hmm. So, if we do not bring up our children seeing us as people of integrity, we are in trouble because they, they will not even know what it is. Mm. For example, many of us have taken children to school. Okay, now we have grandchildren and the great grand, but at one time we were parents ferrying children to school. Mm. And you beat a traffic light, you pass there, it's red, you zoom through, and then you say, God has helped me. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. And the children are watching. Are watching and so they start wondering, God helps us to beat the traffic lights. What else mm -hmm. does he beat us, you know, does he help us to beat? Mm -hmm. Or a businessman will say, uh, I, I, I managed to evade the tax, God helped me. Now, these look innocent, mm. but they are very fundamental. Mm. And if we do not pass on the integrity we are talking about to our children, mm. we are not going to have a society that values integrity. Mm. Mm. Unfortunately, there has been a lot of social upheavals mm. here in Uganda through the civil unrest, through HIV, you know, the pandemics. So the family, the cohesion in the family has been uh, broken, mm. okay? <coughs> so many, many people have not grown up with parents. Mm. Guardians, yes, but not parents. And, and the social fabric has also 
been compromised. Mm. So you find that uh, a politician can come and campaign and, and uh, promise me a road. Mm. <laughs> and I know very well he's incapable of giving me a road. <laughs> <laughs> That's not his mandate. Mm. But he, I listen and, and, and uh, you know, knowing very well that this is a show, it's not going to happen. So I'm not really looking for integrity in this pol politician. I don't even know what it is. Mm. So that has been a problem. Mm. And I think because society has lost that component, these people who are not true to what they promise thrive. Mm. Mm. Unfortunately, that's what our children are going to grow up seeing. Mm. I, when I was in school, it never occurred to me that you can cheat in an exam. Mm. Never. Let alone our teachers. Mm. The headmistress actually planning. And um, one time we were in a school meeting, parents, teachers, and so this group of parents narrated an incident because they wanted to know why does you never say this school cheated and another didn't. Mm. So they went to UNEB and they showed them the children's scripts. Mm. This is P7. Mm -hmm. One, the answers <coughs> were very similar. Mm. So the official in UNEB said they must have been dictated. Mm. Now, one answer gave them away completely because several children wrote, and this you can do for yourself. Wow. <laughs> Which means this teacher was dictating answers. Yes. But when it came to that one, it was so simple. Mm -hmm. So the teacher said, and this, this you, can, you do. can do for yourself. <laughs> and the children wrote. And they wrote it for that team. So it is so sad <laughs> that a child is exposed to this kind of, um, yeah. you know, cheating in life. Mm. You don't even <coughs> respect yourself. Mm. Mm. Because I, I, am, I have confidence, for example, in being a doctor because I trained. Sure. I did not cheat. These men scrubbed me and grilled me until they were sure I can do this procedure. Now, if I had paid somebody to do it, it just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So we have a problem, but I believe that with God, it is possible mm -hmm. to regain mm -hmm. our, our sense of integrity and also uh, regain it as a value system. Thank you, Dr. Eki. Mm -hmm. And Canon Edward, I want us to take you back to the hand of time. Uh, Dr. Eki ended by saying, we have a problem. What was it like then? What has changed or is changing now? And what was being done then that is not being done now? That we are risking nurturing a generation that doesn't even know the word integrity at all. Thank you very much. Um, it is interesting, my perspective really is, is that man lacks integrity. It doesn't matter whether we go back a hundred years or we go back a thousand years. The Bible in Genesis says this is a corrupt and crooked generation. In Genesis, the Bible says in Philippians, this is a corrupt and a crooked generation. Very true. Today we can say this is a corrupt and wicked, wicked generation. generation. <laughs> so going back mm. until we address the issue, uh, that's why when Jesus left, he told us go and preach the gospel. Mm. Because the gospel can straighten a person. Mm. The gospel can help us to change. Uh, in, in Romans, the Bible says that don't be conformed the patterns of this world. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the patterns of this world? Lack of value system, mm -hmm. poor tests, inconsistency, mm 
uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. But he says, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And you can be transformed when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Now, I, I, I liked the, the this, this doesn't have to be associated with a generation. Mm -hmm. The idea of wellness that John talked about. We are told that uh, the word hypocrisy comes from a Greek word, has a Greek origin. Mm -hmm. And that, that Greek origin, hypocrisy actually means zanachita. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. Somebody who put, if you want to stage, mm -hmm. they say, act as a thief. <laughs> <laughs> so you act as a thief, mm -hmm. but you are not a thief. a thief. Now, lack of integrity is like that. Mm. You get people who come, they come in here and they act good. Mm. But they are not good. They are not good. Are not good. So, until, because there is so much hypocrisy, and you remember that during his time, the Lord Jesus Christ talked a lot about hypocrisy. Mm. You are hypocrites. You hypocrites. You hypocrites. So we, we have a fundamental problem. People must be real. Mm. They, they are not acting. When we live our lives now, we, let's not pretend that we are acting. Mm. Yeah? Now, when, when you think about uh, Eki, Eki stirred up my mind when she talked about going through the traffic lights, and you begin to wonder, where, where are we as a country going? Because they tell you, drive on, the lift, is that a law? Mm. It is. Mm -hmm. And I am glad, Johnny, you said it. the law is not integrity. Mm. Drive on, the lift. and we have powers to ensure that. Mm. Now, who are not driving on the left? Mm. The powers that tell us drive on the left. Mm. That's right. Huh? Mm. They're the ones who now say. In fact, they even hoot you off the road, and if it were possible, <laughs> beat you off the road. Huh? Mm. So those people, you don't talk to them about integrity. They are hypocrites. Mm. They are actors. Mm. Now I think that's why Eki is emphasizing that we must we must deal with the problem right from the family, mm. right from mm. our children, mm. because if we don't do that, mm. then we are going to have a lot of trouble. We have trouble of inconsistency. Mm. And when we come to leaders, uh, you, re you will find that a leader who, who lacks integrity will be inconsistent in his actions. Today he does one thing, tomorrow he does yeah. another thing. He will be inconsistent in his values. I mm. uh, will treat people differently. Uh, this one he took, takes them different, that one he takes them different. You will have different expectations. If somebody he likes brings shoddy work, he accepts. Mm. Mm. If somebody he, do, he doesn't want brings shoddy work, he rejects. Mm. So there are different expectations. So a leader who is inconsistent mm. that lacks integrity. We, we individuals, when mm. we are inconsistent in the behavior, mm. in our words, in what we, in how we behave, we, 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 if, if we do that, we lack integrity. integrity. So that's why we are saying that this integrity is, 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 a, is a, a big, a big problem. It pervades life, mm. and it doesn't matter whether we are in this generation or in or the generation the to come. That past mm. or the ones mm. to come. Mm. Great thoughts, great reflections from our guests. Thank you very much. We are going to take a very brief break. Don't think about touching the dial because when we return, we actually continue with the discussion on integrity in leadership. And our guests have already indicated and rightly so showed us that integrity, the issue of integrity, is a big, big problem, both at family level and at national level. And we want to see how do we overcome this problem? How do we graduate to be better people that live both in the public sphere sphere and in the private lives. We are one person, not being one in the other end, and a different person 
on the other end of life. See you when we return. Thank you so much. Welcome back, dear viewer. Leadership His Way is the program. And uh, today we are talking about integrity in leadership. Dr. John, uh, all of you kept emphasizing integrity is the issue of the heart. So I perceive the person is the main stakeholder in living out integrity. Mm -hmm. But are there other key players in society that are either causing a breakdown or an, in, an enhancement in the integrity fabric of society? Or it is just the issue of, is it the person having integrity, no or yes? I think I will start exactly with the family which we talked about earlier. Mm. Uh, increasingly, particularly in the urbanized societies, parents are absentee landlords. So they are not there for the children. I can talk, for example, about someone has children and by nursery you are tucking them away into a boarding school. That is a shame. Or even primary school, you tuck them away in, prim in boarding school, where is your part, where is your role? You are essentially saying, I'm handing over to the school the responsibility of inculcating integrity. You know anything about these teachers? You don't. Okay? We just heard of a school that was closed, I think somewhere in Mubende, where the warden was sodomizing the children, sodomizing the children. Mm. So you, are t you have actually uh, refused your responsibility as a parent mm. to pass on integrity to the children by simply not being there for them. Mm. You are not there. The other thing that is not happening, of course, by the same reason I will carry it something else, is that even the example you would have shown the children because we talked about the driving. Uh, I'm just thinking, and, and that example can be used on many others, mm -hmm. including, let us say, a politician who is standing for a parliamentary seat. Mm -hmm. How you conduct yourself is possibly the biggest lesson that your children are getting about integrity. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, and you can go on and on. So if you are buying votes, your child goes to school, and what is happening now everywhere in schools? They buy votes. Everyone is buying votes, you know? And then we turn around, even those who buy votes, they turn around and they say, but why are children buying votes? <laughs> well, but they are seeing you. Buy You're doing votes. exactly the same thing. Yes. And I must say, especially from the church side, <clears throat> the church is a very important stakeholder in passing on integrity. When I was growing up, I remember the, our local clergyman. He was someone that I could have described using Paul's word, blameless. He was unbelievable. This man, I never saw him raise a voice to anyone. I never heard him tell a lie. The respect he had for other people and so when he stood in the pulpit, and he was not a great preacher at all, <laughs> but his life, yes. I have to admit, that's mm. how I ended up in Christ. Wow. Because of his life. Wow. Now, how are we doing in the church? Great you see, sermons. whether we like it or not, the church has a great influence. Mm. Even those leaders who criticize, when they see that the church is doing it right, mm. their mouths are sealed and their criticisms cannot fly mm. the church in my opinion has a very critical responsibility mm. on the issue of integrity because you see the one thing and this is what I wanted very much for my children for them to know the Lord for themselves to have the fear of God for themselves that yes starts with me as a parent but the church does a lot of work in that area. Why is that important? Because if our children see what the church leadership is doing, mm. 
that the children, uh, uh, the children are going to learn that the fear of God comes first. So it does not matter whether it's in public or it is in private. And that's the fear that, by the way, was put in my heart. To understand that God is seeing me in the secrecy of my other activities. It's not like I never became naughty. I became naughty. But the last thing I ever wanted was my parents or the church to hear about it. And you see, I did not want them to know anything about it. But it was already there, implanted. So let the church also understand. The law really comes in only as a coercive power to force people into line. Okay, but you know, like we said earlier, the law sometimes is wrong. I mean, don't we know very well that in many countries the law has legalized abortion, sure. has legalized homosexuality, mm. has legalized every other evil, mm. you know? So the issue of the law, I think, comes in later. Mm. And if the society itself, the leadership themselves as individuals, are people of integrity, then they will make laws mm. that comply with that integrity. Very true. You see? Mm. But sometimes the mistake we make, you are a legislator, you are making the law, which is good, but your own life. Mm. You see, you are not a person of integrity. Mm. So if your own life is not speaking to what you are legislating about, mm. you are creating uh, that hypocrisy that we talked about, the two lives. Mm -hmm. huh? You act very well in parliament. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you really do a very good job acting there. Mm -hmm. um, like that Greek word uh, says, hypocrite. Mm -hmm. But when you go down, you are living a completely different That's life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dr. Eki, are there other key players in society that are causing a breakdown in this integrity fabric that we continue to see today? Um, let me just <coughs> emphasize what um, Dr. Jonas said. At the beginning, he said integrity addresses the whole person. Mm. And um, in health, we talk about the integrity of the system, mm. meaning the system is whole, is functioning the way it's supposed to function, is effective. Mm. Therefore, integrity is not a standalone value. Mm. If you like, it is um, maybe the glue that puts all these various um, bricks in, in, in our value system together. Mm -hmm. We teach our children good manners, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, this is how you greet in Uganda, we kneel. Uh, how do you respond? How do you treat an adult? How do you treat each other? Uh, do, do you say thank you? Do you say please? All that builds the integrity of the person. Mm -hmm. So you cannot teach integrity. Mm. I don't think somebody can develop a curriculum mm. because it's so much part of the heart mm. of who the person is. Mm. So if we lose our culture of values, we will not retain our integrity because we are no longer whole, okay? And a lot of the things I've mentioned are ingrained in our culture values. I think you've heard about the gentleman's agreement. Mm. If I buy land and say we bought land, those days you didn't know how to write, so it was a word of mouth, you bought, you bought, that's it. Nobody will come to question, did she mm -hmm. really buy? No, she bought. Mm -hmm. Making sure that our word is our word. Mm -hmm. Now that 
That is a big part of a person of integrity. But we also don't want to, um, John mentioned the church, but we do not want to forget that, yes, the church can do so much, but it is faith in Christ Jesus that builds our integrity. Sure. Even where it has been broken over and over again, the Lord Jesus makes all things new. Mm -hmm. Because as Edward said, as people, we do integrity is foreign to us as human beings. Mm -hmm. But the Lord Jesus responds. Mm -hmm. And we sit here and talk about integrity because of what the Lord has done in our lives. Mm -hmm. We can talk you know, with confidence. Mm -hmm. So even um, when people do not give their lives to Christ, that's a big factor mm -hmm. that will compromise the integrity of that society. Mm -hmm. I will leave it at that. Thank you, Dr. Eki. Any reflections, Canon Edward, on society, on key players, and the issue of integrity? I want to look at it in two ways. Mm -hmm. There are the positive, mm -hmm. I think we have pointed out, the, those post, positive actors mm -hmm. who can contribute to integrity and society mm -hmm. if they do their work. Mm -hmm. And I think we are bewailing the fact that they are actually not doing yeah. their work. Mm -hmm. If they were doing their work, maybe we would see a rise in integrity in the society. Uh, but we want now to look at the negative, those who are undermining integrity in our society. Uh, unfortunately, I think, I think we've touched on that also. Unfortunately, some of the people undermining integrity in the society the leaders are uh, powerful, <laughs> very, very powerful. And so when, when, when we think about uh, the issue of corruption, because corruption uh, and bribery mm. undermines character, undermines integrity. Mm. Now, who are promoting bribery? I think we have a system now in this country which promotes bribery. And blames it on the poor. And <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because they, they keep on saying, you know, people are corrupt because they are poor. <laughs> so bribery, people who are promoting bribery. Mm. Now, we can, we can think about ourselves. And, and how we will have reacted in those situations. Mm. Have, are you guilty of having a bribery anywhere, somebody? Or do you seek bribe to render service to somebody? Mm. Mm. Because now, I, I hear people crying. I, I have a, a, a person, is a teacher. He said to get the job, I had to pay two million. Mm -hmm. But now to be promoted, they have asked for five million. Now a teacher earns how much money? <laughs> if you were a primary teacher, you <laughs> another one who shared with me, they, they, they want to be a village chief. Mm -hmm. They asked for four million. So a, a, the system we have in place now mm -hmm. promotes bravery. Mm -hmm. And the bread, but undermines the integrity. Very true. So either we are giving or we are receiving mm. bribes, mm. and that is very, very, very bad. Mm. Now you, you, we can go to another system. I don't know whether this is a system, but you think of this: what they call sex workers. Mm. Hmm? Now we don't know. I don't know whom I will blame for sex workers. <laughs> but, but, but you know that, that families are failing, marriages are failing mm -hmm. because of sex workers. Uh, so they are undermining integrity in society. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you move on to more delicate, more, more sophisticated ground. The way we are driving on the roads, mm -hmm. is it really promoting integrity or not? If you, if you delay on the road, they will kick your car mm -hmm. and you can have an accident. Mm -hmm. And they are keeping, keeping either right or left. Now, is that promoting integrity or it is undermining integrity? Undermining. Undermining. So we have all systems, both in the government and in the civil side and everywhere, mm -hmm. which, is, which are undermining integrity. integrity. So we can't then go on to say you have to have integrity. And now I think the challenge is go and find out a man who has integrity. <laughs> <laughs> Dear viewer, please be that man that will be found with integrity. <laughs> and Canon talked about uh, sex workers and the kind of trade that they do. I am highly convicted that actually if they did not have customers, probably they would find better work to do. So, yes, the paradox remains. Uh, Dr. John, what then can we do from the grassroots level to cultivate integrity among the young. Maybe as, as adults, we are failing, but what can we do now to that young generation so that they do not fall into the, pit, the ditch that we find ourselves into today? My thinking is um, there are two areas, because integrity is a value. Mm. There are two areas from which we draw our values. Mm. And one area is culture. Mm. And it was touched on. And, and I, want to, to, I want you to pause at that and I ask, do we still have a culture? Okay. Mm -hmm. That is exactly that is exactly the key thing. Mm -hmm. You know? But let me first mention the second. Please go ahead. The other is religion. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that inform the values we take on. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a very good question when you said we still have a culture. Because how can you have a culture without families that are holding together? How can you have culture? So now everyone is forming their own cultures. And what was wrong yesterday has become right. And what was right yesterday is no longer trending, if I can use the words that we use these days. So it becomes necessary for us to think seriously. And, and when we talk about culture, sometimes, sometimes people spoil this word culture, mm -hmm. and then they think that witchcraft is also part of culture. Mm -hmm. Witchcraft is a religious practice. It's not culture. So you cannot, you cannot say that witchcraft is part, it's, it's part of, of culture. culture. No, 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 no. That is religious, mm -hmm. OK? Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about those values that teach us what is good, what is right, what is true. And those are things that they will learn first and foremost. Culture is first and foremost passed on in the family. We have emphasized the family, but I think, you know, once you take away the family, you're causing a problem. It has to start in the family. And then the family can say, this is right, this is wrong, this is true, this is false, this is good, this is evil. Mm -hmm. You know, the family has got to be there mm -hmm. in that picture. Mm -hmm. And there is no way that you can put it aside. Mm -hmm. But that also demands the presence of parents. Mm -hmm. The presence of parents. This is not going to be passed on by house helps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Those are house helps, but they are not supposed to pass on their values. It's like even the teachers. Mm. They are not the ones to pass on their values to my to children. children. The responsibility squarely falls on the parent. Mm. But like I said, even really <coughs> very important. Mm. And I think this, this calls for churches mm. to stand up very clearly. Mm. Because if you have a family mm. that goes for worship, that is another community. Let me just take the example very briefly of the Jews. And you can see it a little bit in the Indian context, mm. among the Indians. Mm. It was not very different, by the way, with the Jews. 
Many times when we read the Bible, we read about synagogues. Synagogues were not the temples. No. When people went, and this, the way the synagogue, because for me I saw it, the way the synagogues were built, it was intended to be like a community meeting. Mm. That's where they read the, they, they read, they read the, uh, the scrolls and did whatever. <coughs> but they also discussed community issues. Mm. That well is no longer producing water that was discussed in the synagogue. Wow. <laughs> and then you wow. mobilize together. Mm -hmm. And they would sit the man and his family. So it was not the women sitting away. They were all seated together in the yeah. synagogue. Wow. And they would discuss everything that concerns. Now, you know what that was doing? Mm -hmm. By being together, they were forming the children. Mm -hmm. The children were actually being formed. Mm -hmm. Now, we've lost that, mm -hmm. you know? Because when you see the, the parents would go with Jesus and, and so forth, and they would sit in there. Mm. Now, the Gospels record for us mostly what Jesus did and said in the synagogues, and we don't see that other side, that actually synagogues were community centers of sorts mm. for worship for, and also for dealing with the community issues. Mm. Mm. And we need a little bit of that, that when we go to church, mm. Churches should not be entirely about you get saved, you get saved. Mm, mm. Yeah? But are we taking, are we nurturing the family? Mm. Are we nurturing the young people? Mm. Are we not, so it participates, whether we like it or not, mm. in forming those people. Thank you, Dr. John. Yeah, you talk about family, you talk about the church. And uh, as you talked, I kept thinking about the ordinary Ugandan feeling helpless. Think about family. They have to wake up very early and go to hustle. But think about the children with, for example, our education system today. When we think about children, when do parents, even the parents who are available, have the opportunity to meet with the children? Children are picked at 5 a.m. They are yeah. brought back home with loads and loads of homework. Yeah. And by the time they are done, they are dead tired. They just want to go and mm -hmm. sleep. So, Dr. Eki, what can we practically do? Let's, let's widen the scope. Yes, the parent has a role, but mm. think about government, think about our leaders mm. in the government space. What is it that they can do to help us to be able to build from the grassroots? First of all, there's been an outcry about parents. They are not there, they are. But I also want to encourage those who are doing who are doing well. Mm. I mean, really trying to spend time with their children. Mm. Everything is you know, kind of um, militating against the family. Mm -hmm. the, this woman who has to get up in the morning early and go to the market to get things to sell, we have to, to commend her mm. because she's uh, maybe a single mother and is trying to earn money for the children's whatever. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we can't say it, she's just money-minded, no. Mm -hmm. And therefore, she, she has to put the, the, the child on the school bus at five. Mm -hmm. In her mind, the child is safe, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And she's sure the child will get to school. Mm -hmm. But also, we... If you really want to do something, you can create time for it. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage parents out there. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the, in the compounds of the church, mm -hmm. for us to, to find ways of getting together mm -hmm. and see how to engage the children. Mm -hmm. We had a, um, what we called a youth day at my church, St. John's in Luboa. Mm. And we, we wanted just to find out what are the issues among the youth in our church. Mm. Now we are almost overwhelmed with the numbers, first of all. Because... Oh, that's a good problem. These ones invited others from other churches. Mm. We, we had almost 300 children and a few of us. 
Then we said, Mother's Union, please come and help us. But Father's Union, they said, ah, what are we going to do? Father's Union, what? But the issues among the children were not rocket science from the moon. Mm -hmm. They were things we can address as parents. Parents do not say, we have nothing to say to the children. You do have something to say. And if they are, if they are programs like this at church, participate. Even if you think there isn't much for you to say to your children, at least come and learn how to, to talk to your child. Mm -hmm. Also, you don't need um, a time that is kind of formal. These children, um, they, they are very versatile, if I can use it. Anywhere you put them, so long as you are there, they, they are going to respond. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? I got more out of my children when we were washing up dishes, mm -hmm. or cleaning my room, or they are helping me to make my bed. Mm -hmm. Then the child just should up. You know, mommy, this teacher said this, and I learned not to say, what? What did he say? He said, really? What did he, why did he? So, Th those are the snippets of time mm -hmm. I want to encourage mothers and fathers mm -hmm. to have with their children. Mm -hmm. Fathers, if you are going wherever fathers go, take the boy, take the girl, <laughs> <laughs> and let, the, let them see what you do, okay? Mm -hmm. Mothers, can we go shopping with them? Mm -hmm. They will learn not to run and, and, and knock things in the aisles of the, the shops. Mm -hmm. They will learn how to talk to the, the, the lady or gentleman at the counter. They will learn how to ask, please, where can I find this? Those things are passed on mm. informally. Mm. So I want to encourage the parents to spend time with their children. Mm. Mm. The children want to see a parent respond, mm. OK? Mm. I'm, I'm with them in a taxi, and somebody steps on me. Do I go up in flames and, you know? If somebody insults me, what do I do? How do I talk to a market vendor? Mm -hmm. If I'm stopped by a policeman, what do I do? All those things, you know, they, they look very small, mm -hmm. but they will impact this child. Mm -hmm. And we want the children to be like us. Mm -hmm. Because this child says, Mommy, I want to be like you when I, I grow up. And I'm like, oh, God forbid. But really, really. It also helps you. Mm -hmm. So yes, a lot has been said about parents not caring, da, 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 you are money-minded, what, what. Mm -hmm. But we, we need to encourage them that we are not asking for much. Don't mm -hmm. give up your job. Mm -hmm. Don't give children an hour. Mm -hmm. No, as often as you can, mm -hmm. even when the child comes home, at least go and, and see how they shower. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Eki still talking about building from the grassroots, uh, there's an increasing outcry that the fathers have gone upset. I don't know where the fathers have gone. <laughs> Canon Edward, tell us. <laughs> what is the father's stake in building from the grassroots as we cultivate integrity I, I among the young? I, I don't know. I, I think I want to, to take it, to bring it up back a little bit to the leaders. Uh, integrity in leadership. And we see societies degenerating. There is a lot that can be done at the family level. But very soon, the children are going to leave the family. Actually, now, it is sad to say, but the child is not being mentored by the parents. The child is being mentored by television. The child is being mentored by the phone. The child is being mentored by the computer. So I want to come back to the leaders and say that leaders must actually demonstrate integrity in the way they lead. They must exhibit integrity in the things they do. And I think they can do that both both, both the leaders at, at, at different levels, whether in the government or in the organizations, but even the, 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 the fathers in the, in the family. Mm -hmm. 
by exhibiting, by practicing certain principles. Mm -hmm. I think we, we need to learn to be humble. It's a principle. Humility is a principle of life. That if you are humble, you are likely to do the right things than when you are proud. That is one. Two, we must be people of promise. That our word is our bond. What we say, yeah, we will do. We don't say one thing and do another thing. And I want to 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 end this with the, the, the principle of honesty. We must learn at every level to be honest. Honest in our relationships uh, and honest in the use of resources. I, I think I'll leave it at that. Well, I want to thank my guests today, Dr. John Senyonyi, Dr. Eki, Canon Edward, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for sharing that deep wisdom with the world. Uh, I want to also thank our hosts where we have been coming to you live from, Compassion International. These ladies, not this lady, when I include myself, we become ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, are what you are seeing because someone invested something in them at the grassroots. So why don't you go and know that child? Why don't you go and love them and protect them? And when they grow up, they will become fine adults. We want to thank you so much. We will keep the conversation going. Until next time, the Lord bless you from each one of us. And thank you so much for watching.